Hi, this is problem 10 from the 2018 AIM-1. The wheel shown below consists of two circles and five spokes, with a label at each point where a spoke meets a circle. A bug walks along the wheel starting at point A. At every step in the process, the bug walks from one labeled point to an adjacent labeled point. Along the inner circle, the bug only walks in a counterclockwise direction, and along the outer circle, the bug only walks in a clockwise direction. For example, the bug could travel this example path, which has 10 steps. Let n be the number of paths with 15 steps that begin and end at point A. Find the remainder when n is divided by 1,000. OK, a very difficult counting problem, it looks like. So let's try to diagram the types of moves that we need to consider. Along the inner circle, we're always moving in a counterclockwise direction. We could also move inward along the spokes. We could move outward along the spokes. And along the outer circle, we're always moving in a clockwise direction. Now when I first did this problem, I counted these as four distinct types of moves, and that was a very messy counting task, and one I don't wish to describe here. But when you stare at this problem more carefully, you may notice that you only need to consider two types of moves. The red type of move, which I'll call a type 1 move, and the blue type of move, which I'll call a zero type move. So let's look at a few examples to see how this works. In the first example, let's consider the simplest case where we choose 15 moves around the inner circle to get us back to point A. So in our notation, we would call this five one moves, five more one moves, and five more one moves. And there's clearly only one way to do this, so let's give that a count of one. All right, let's look at some more complicated examples. Let's imagine we go around the inner circle with five red moves to get us back to A. And now let's go back and forth along AJ five times. So what does that look like in our notation? That would be one, 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 followed by zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Okay, so that, uh, is one example, and we may notice that this last character always has to be a one. It always has to be a red move to get us back to A, because any type of blue move is always going to take us away from A. So let's consider another example. What if we go around the inner circle with five red moves, and then move to the outer circle with a sequence of blue moves, to get us to this point I, and then come back in with a sequence of red moves to get us back to point A. So what does that look like in our notation? That's one, 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 followed by a series of five zeros, one, 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 one. And again, this last character seems to always have to be a one. It has to be a red move to bring us back towards A. Any type of blue move will always take us away from A. <clears throat> so it looks like with this and a few more examples, you can sort of convince yourself that any sequence of 10 ones and five zeros will satisfy starting from A and getting back to A, provided this last character is always a one. So we're free to choose the locations of the ones and zeros for the first 14 locations and that looks to be a lot like a spelling problem with letters that are identical. In this case, we have 14 characters, nine of which are ones, five of which are zeros, and we're trying to see how many different ways can we spell out ones and zeros in this 14 character word. And again, that's a problem type that you've probably come across. The answer is 14 factorial divided by the adjustment for the identical characters. That's 9 factorial, 5 factorial, and that works out to 14 times 13 
divided by 5 factorial. You can do some cancellations here. Cancels out the 12, this cancels out the 10. 11 times 13 times 14 is equal to 2002. Great, so now let's consider a last case. Let's imagine that we go around the inner circle with only four red moves before we move to the outer circle with some blue moves and go around the outer circle with two rotations before coming back with our last red move. So in our notation that would look like 1, 1, 1, 0 with a balance of 0 moves. And here again, the last character always has to be a 1, but the locations of the first 14 characters we can rearrange so long as we have four 1s and 10 zeros to make up five ones and 10 zeros in total. So here again, this looks like the spelling question that we had before. We have a 14 character word that has four characters that are identical and a, uh, 10 characters that are identical. So the number of ways we can spell that is 14 factorial, 10, 10 factorial, 14 times 13, Cancel out the 12, brings us down to 7. 7 times 11 times 13 is 1,001. These are the three cases. We just have to add them up. Final answer, 3,004. Last three digits, 004. Okay, uh, you may notice that uh, it's pretty easy to multiply 7 times 11 times 13. Turns out that 1001 shows up frequently in math competitions, so it's good to know that 1001 is equal to the prime factorization 7, 13, and 11. Anyway, hope that helps, and uh, we'll see you at the next AIM year. Take care. Bye-bye.